Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make the bow used by Arrow in seasons 2 and 3 and 4 of the TV show Arrow. I hope you guys enjoy this build. The things you're going to need for this build are foam core poster board, hot glue, black and gray spray paint, about 3 feet of wax paper, some masking tape or painter's tape, an X-Acto blade, silver acrylic paint or a silver sharpie, some sandpaper, a sanding block, a sanding sponge, everything sandpaper, cereal box cardboard, some white glue or a Mod Podge, some string or twine, a paintbrush or a sponge brush, plastic wood filler or any wood filler, squiggly line drawing skills, a large bowl or something curved, blood, sweat, tears, a couple days of insanity, and a dream. And a template. I made mine using the link in the description. So to start off, you want to get your template. I made this one using an image off of the internet. It's called myloudfamily.com and they have 3D, kind of like 3D, 2D images of bow and arrows. And they happen to have the Oneida Kestrel. So you want to get that and you want to trace it onto your foam core. You might need three to five layers depending on how thick your foam core is or depending on how thick you want your bow. Now as for all the circle details, you can put those in, but I just prefer to leave mine solid. So we want to trace that three or four times and cut it out, and then we'll see where we've got to. So once you're done cutting out all of your foam core shapes, now the template, this template will only fit on the foam core about six times, which is still okay because all the leftover pieces are good enough to be glued on top of that piece in the shape of another piece, which can help you out with all the details, carving out all the details. But it's just a per personal preference for me that you will glue them like four together because it just makes your life a lot easier in my opinion. And in the next step, we're just gonna be getting these, bunching them together, and we're just gonna glue them together. Now I'm gonna use white glue because it gives me a lot of time to play around with it and make sure everything's aligned. And hot glue just doesn't have that time with it. So see you then. So, now that the main body of the bow is drying, I'm using white glue because I feel that it gives me a lot of time to play around with it. And I have it rubber banded and it's outside drying. So, in the meantime, we're going to want to make the half lens. Here I have a piece of cereal box cardboard and I've traced out this template. Now this template is very, very easy to make. It's just three and a half centimeters, maybe a little bit more. I like to make things a little bit larger because as you cut them out, you cut them out smaller. It's three and a half centimeters here, so you can literally just draw a line onto a sheet of paper. And it's 17 centimeters upwards. And then once you get to the top, you're gonna need to use something round or just sketch it. You're gonna need to draw a curve. Now my curve wasn't too sharp of an angle, so I came back in and I drew my own. Now we wanna cut this out place down to another sheet of this cardboard and as many times as we can we want to layer it. I usually get about five or six layers in but I'm going to use white glue so I'll be able to get more layers in. So once you have all of these shapes cut out you're going to want to glue them all together using some school glue and once they're all like laminated you want to get the bunch of them place it on a bowl which the circumference of the area that you're going to be putting the limb on is about a quarter of the length of the limb itself. So this bowl was a measurement, I forget exactly what it was, and when I divided it into four, it was just about around 18 centimeters, and these are about 17, so they're pretty good. And it's not exactly 90 degrees, so it's perfect. And then you just want to elastic band them and leave them to dry. So once you're all done with those and you've elastic banded them, and just a warning, this will be very challenging. It would be helpful if you had somebody to help you out to put these elastic bands on because they will slip very easily off the bowl. And it's very hard to stretch certain rubber bands because these ones are the strong ones. And now you're gonna wanna let this dry overnight because you wanna make sure that this glue is fully cured. Now I do have the bodies of the bowls, but they're not fully cured either. They're still wet, so I'm gonna put those outside along with this to fully cure. And while all of that is happening, I'm probably gonna teach you how to make the arrow rest, I guess. So the arrow rest he uses in the show 
is a very special one. I forget what it was. It was 600 something. I'll put it on the screen right now. And you can easily find it on eBay right now. It's actually very inexpensive. In fact, I'll leave a, a link in the description down below. It's very, very inexpensive considering how rare it's considered to be. It's about $40 plus tax and everything. And it's about $40, $50. It's not a bad price considering what it does. It's a type of aero shelf that has two wires that are kind of spring wire which allows the arrow to easily be placed on without it like bouncing around on certain ones and the bow also has these pods so I'm going to show you how to make the pods so for the pods which go on top of the half limbs resting piece which the half limbs are connected to I'm just going to be using this piece of here, lost cardboard, and it's five it's five centimeters by three and a half centimeters, and I've just rounded the edges a bit. And now we're gonna trace this onto a piece of the scrap foam core that was left over from when we did the actual bow. So once we have these two pods done, we're just gonna set those aside. They'll look a lot better. We're gonna be cleaning all of this up with some sandpaper, but we're gonna be working on the camouflage. And just to explain myself, I didn't know that he his season two, like two and three bow that he used in seasons two and three was actually camouflage. I thought it was just matte black. So I painted my bow matte black, thinking that it looked good. Little did I know it was camouflage. So right now I'm going to be doing it for the first time. I have done camouflage before, but it's always been for like wooden airsoft armor plates. Like it was very basic, but it was a bunch of layered colors. Now I'm going to be showing you the two ways that you can do it. So after doing a lot of sanding work around the edges, what you want to, going to want to do is you're going to, want, you're going to want to get some cereal box cardboard. It doesn't matter what it's from. This is just a scrap from when I made a Batman cowl. And you want to line the edges of it. This will give it a very nice smooth look. So here you can see my work done after quite a couple minutes of sanding. And I also used a file to fine tune the edges. And now we need to give it a solid clear coat. So I just made a quick version of his arrow rest used in the show. And I can bring you in very close here. So I made all these fake welds using hot glue just because I prefer them. They look very interesting. And they look more interesting than it just being brand new and smooth. I have made these out of some wire and I've reinforced them with some bolts. And I think. This is like my version of it. You can make one that's authentic, but I want to my, go my way a little bit on this. Like, I want to be a little bit creative. And you can buy the real one about $40 plus shipping and all that on eBay. And it'll, it's very expensive though for an arrow rest, but it's a very good arrow rest. And I'll leave a link in the description down below and I'll put the name on the screen right now. But yeah, this is my version of it. If you want a tutorial, let me know, but I probably won't have to make one. Hope you guys can make this because this is very basic. So let's move on. So here are the pods. They've cured from the coat of white glue. And it kind of made the ink run, but I don't really care. It doesn't really show the paint later. So you just want to start grinding down. It's well it's kind of a good idea if you peel off the paper, to be honest, because it's probably the hardest part to sand through, and you shouldn't really be sanding through paper. And it's very easy to work at. You can just see it's very smooth right now. It's very easy to work with. And you just want to work on these until they're both rounded and have smooth bevels. Once you're you've done that step, then it's time for me to show you all the detail parts. So here we have the two pods, which have been smoothed out. You just work on the side bevels, and then you start smoothing them out. And then you can do the corners, and it, you can get a very nice rounded shape on them. Now, as for the details, just all I, from what we know, there isn't too much detail on them. From what we know, there's just a box near one end. I'm just going to draw this on because pretty much they're so little and they're not even used for the whole season. From what I know, they're not even used for a, a long time, so you don't necessarily need to do this. I'm just doing this for my season 2 3 bow because I don't think they're on season 4 bow. So you just want to draw these out. And once you've drawn these out, you can easily 
do it with, cut it with an exacto. I'm not actually gonna be putting these details in. The pods are good enough for me, just a shape. I might do a little bit more detail, like a line or something, but nothing too big. Like, yeah, it's just, they're not even in for the whole season, so it's not like it would really make a difference. So here we have the finished pods, and I've smoothed them out, and I've just drawn on this design because it's very basic, and plus, I don't even think I, I'm just making them in this basic shape because he doesn't even have them for most of, like, even the whole season. So I'm just making these just this size, just for now because it's really this basic and he, he doesn't even have them for the whole season so there's not really there's no point in having them unless you're going to use them but there is one main detail and that's why you might want to do more than two layers you just put two holes in each end so with the second set of limbs drying as well as the first I decided that I should also make a second arrow rest because I'm going to be using it on both bows. Also, I've started drawing on the hole details. Now, I don't want to go like overkill on this because if you put too many holes, it will weaken the integrity of the bow very, very greatly. So I'm just going to put these three holes and maybe one more. I think there's one more there. I'm not quite sure. I've got to look at some reference photos. But I'm just going to cut these out all the way through and sand them. And I'll do the same on this bow. And we're just going to get all of those details done. I've done all the details so far, but if I did any more of the details, it would actually compromise the integrity so much to the point where like, if you dropped it, it would just break. So this is about as weak as I'm willing to go. And the next step you want to do is you want to get some plastic wood or any kind of glue. I'll just, well, like any kind of wood filler. I just bring this up close. You want it to be able to fill in the cracks of the bow and you want to be able to sand it. I would recommend you get body filler, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So when I do find that, I'll end up using it. But all I could find was this. So yeah, so you want to fill in all the gaps. By the way, I would not touch this with your hands because your hands will get very dry and it'll get all crusty all over your fingers and it'll be really annoying for a long time. So you just want to get this, break the ceiling hole. I haven't opened it yet. You want to put it along the edges and I'm just going to be using the end. So once the wood filler is dry, and you can also use Bondo, but I feel the wood is just a little bit softer, and body filler does take quite a bit of work to sand down. Once it's all dry, you want to sand it down, which I've done here, and you want to get it to a nice texture and look, and you can paint over it with white glue or, or the sealant, but I kind of like it because it gives a different texture on the edges, and for the season 4 bow, you do actually need that. but. Right now, we just want to get this, smooth it out, and once you're all done that, we want to paint it black with some matte black paint. You can use acrylic paints. I'm just using spray paints because it's what I have access to. And then we're going to work on the camo. So, how to do the camouflage, you just want to get some masking like tape and put it on some wax paper. And you'll have to rub it good to make it really stick. Then you just want to draw in your squiggly lines or your camouflage. Camouflage just... You just have to draw very freely, just let your hand go. And then you want to cut all of these out. And I have a little mock here, I just colored this with marker really quick. You want to get these stickers and you just want to stick them on. And then you want to paint it with your gray. And you don't want to use a primer, in fact I actually used a gloss black, uh, gray. Because I think it gives it a little bit more contrast having a matte black and a gloss gray. And I do actually have the bow done, which is why I can't show you this process. I apologize for that, but I had to do it in a hurry for a Toronto prop show. And this is what it ended, ends up looking like. I didn't even finish the pods, and I didn't really want to. He barely has them at all, but yeah. So this is what the bow looks like. It has a custom bowstring, just made out of some garden twine. And yeah, this is what the camo looks like. And you will have to put it in all the holes. You'll see, like, over here, it goes into the holes almost. I didn't really want to bring it in, because then taking it off would be pretty difficult. But yeah, and the cams are pretty puny-like, and that's just how I like it, because I like it to be a simplified design, as if this was, like, just no pulleys at all. And you could make it much more complex, let me tell you, but this is about as complex as I'm willing to go. Now, for the season 4 paint job, it's no camo at all. From what we can see, Emily Beck Rick Beck Rick Rickards, 
Richards, my apologies. She posted a picture on Instagram of the new bow and several other props in a darkened room. What we know is that those holes, if I just reach down and get this bow, these holes right here have silver along the edges. As for all the other details, we don't really know anything. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do that. So I ended up not actually having black spray paint. So I decided to paint the bow green, which is just as well. I kind of got to use my creative mind to come up with a couple new ideas. Painting these silver details is very basic. Just get a paintbrush and some silver acrylic paint. You could also do it with a silver sharpie, but I prefer acrylic over a marker. And I also added some details on here. I dry brushed some silver to make really make it look like straight metal. And then I put some hot glue on here. And while the hot glue is cooling, I put on some acrylic paint. And that's what really gives it the effect that these are actual welds. And I've just done that, and it's still drying right now. And once it's all dry, it'll really look like metal. And once it's all done, we just want to get these limbs and glue them to the bow. Now there's an, a way that you can actually have them flex, like his does in the show, but that's for a separate tutorial. If you guys want to see that, let me know. But I'll just show you a quick and simple way right now. This helps if you have hinges, like small hinges, and you can cut them in half. That would help actually keep this on. But a really simple and cheap way is to just get some rubber bands place them over the half limbs, and then place that over the body. It does take quite a bit of force. And then place that over this piece. And I can't even do it right now, and I would prefer not to, but basically it acts as a spring to keep it in this position. And when the string pulls, it lets it, and then once you let go, it holds it back in place. But that'll be a separate tutorial, as well as the arrows. So here you can see I've glued on just a quick make makeshift string just using some embroidery floss. You don't want it to be too tight because if it's too tight it'll look too real and trust me you don't want people thinking that you have a weapon. And I just glued on the arrow rest. A lot of these pieces are very very like precise like the arrow rest. If you want a tutorial for that please leave me a comment down below knowing that. But if I just go and get an archery arrow, this is an actual archery arrow that is meant for actual bows. This is an actual archery arrow. I made it myself, but like it's it's meant for an actual bow to shoot it. You can see it's supported easily by this arrow rest I've made. It's not like it could hold a very heavy aluminum arrow, but it can hold an arrow. And you can see it does have a little bit of give, but you don't want to bend these half limbs. Like I just did that, but I'll just bend this back. But yeah, so this is what I have. And as you can see, the flashings line up perfectly. So I hope you enjoyed this video of me showing you how to make these two bows. If you have any specific questions on making certain things like the arrow rest, maybe the cams, and making the half limbs move or anything, just let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to make a video about that.